Hi, it's Laura Slacken, founder of Nest in New York. I'm here with Jerome Epinette, who is one of my favorite perfumers. Uh, we've been working together for so many years. I think we go back to 2006, 2007. I think you were coming to New York from Paris and I was starting my brand. Nest New York at the very same time. You've recently won, well actually over the past few years, the Perfumer Extraordinaire mm. Award, um, which is a very, very prestigious award in the, in the fragrance industry, in the Fragrance Foundation. Tell us a little bit about that award. The Perfume Extraordinaire uh, Award is basically a panel of perfumers that will vote for the fragrance that is the most unique the fragrance that is the most different, more creative, being picked by those perfumers is very uh, flattering. It's, yes, it's pretty that's... nice, you know, because it's, uh, they're smelling the fragrances blind, so you don't have any marketing behind, you don't have any level, concentration, and all that. It's just the smell. You work with us with Home for, when we launched in 2008, we launched Nest Fragrances, the brand. And you were very instrumental in producing um, some really beautiful fragrances for our launch. And you continue to work with us. I think that um, out, of the out of the fragrances that we have, 20 of them are yours. Um, top selling fragrances, and that's really exciting. But in 2013, I was inspired to go into fine fragrance. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in my library one day looking at some art books, and I came across this book by Mrs. Delaney, um, an 18th century artist, and I was just taken with her her botanicals and her artwork so much so that i ripped one out of the book and i wrapped it around my candle box and i said wow that would be really impressive mm. artwork for a fine fragrance collection and that was the start of that and then sephora came along and said we want to launch you and it was very interesting because um, they had not yet started in the niche fine fragrance business but wanted to go after that segment of the market or cre help create that and so I was one of the first niche brands at Sephora. Uh, but I came to you with the painting. So I commissioned a Russian artist to paint these botanicals. I would choose my favorite. He would paint the paintings. And then I would take the paintings to Jerome and ask Jerome to use the paintings as inspiration to create the fragrances. Mm. Um, how did you feel when I showed up at your doorstep with a painting? <laughs> I have many clients that come up with, uh, with ideas, with inspiration boards. And you came just with one picture. So mm. that was already different because when you try to find inspiration with one picture, sometimes it was one flower or painting that you don't want to be too solid flower, you know, that would, mm -hmm. could, could be the risk. But what I want to say is really, I think that was inspirational, but I think the way you describe it was the most inspirational mm -hmm. for me. Showing a, an inspiration source is good, but you always try to describe it the, the way you wanted. Yeah. So I, I listen more to that, to that speech that you had, you know, and again, that's our collaboration, that's our vocabularies that together we use. Yes. At the beginning is true. You were using words that I was not familiar with uh, and, uh, and after what, yeah, I, I understand everything you're saying. You don't even, sometimes you don't even need to talk. Mm -hmm. It's just, I can see your reaction. I can <laughs> see, oh, no, 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 we're not gonna go there. Um, yeah, it's a re really wonderful partnership that's built up over time. And I guess, you know, one of our fragrances, Wild Poppy, and, I'll, and when Jerome talks about the story, um, this was an interesting story for me because I was in the flower market one day and um, I saw a bucket of buds on the floor of the flower market, and they were so ugly, wrinkled, hairy, really ugly, but they caught my eye because they were so different. And then the next week when I came back, the petals started to pop out of the bud, and then the following week, a little bit more, and then the next week I came to the market, and these poppies were all in bloom, and the flowers were so magnificent. To think that they came from such an ugly bud and turned into these beautiful flowers, and as I described to Jerome this whole process, I wanted to capture the painting had to capture the entire process from bud to blossom. Mm. And then I wanted to capture that liveliness and that creativity and that just cheerfulness of the, the poppy flower that yeah. um, and that's the conversation that we exactly had. exactly yeah, yeah that's the basically you were describing the evolution of the flower so you started with something that is not very pretty 
but you have ideas, you have already colors, and you can see the evolution. So it's like it's like a fragrance. You yeah. have the, the top of the fragrance. Yeah. So we use like pear, and it's like crisp and fresh and sparkling. Yeah. And then you enter into that. Uh, you see the the beauty of the rose or the poppies. Yeah. And then you evolve into a more a little darker in the back, uh, slightly gourmand. So we use patchouli, but it's the way you describe it uh, at first. Well, you know, it's interesting because Jerome always introduces the unexpected in our fragrances, which makes them really, really extraordinary. So um, with the wild poppy, yes, it was rose de Mai and Himalayan jasmine, but it was the pear and the apricot mm. um, that, you know, all these unusual notes that he brings in that makes the fragrances so different and so that each one has its own personality. I remember when we worked on Black Tulip, um, which is, you know, the minute, I remember this, that Jerome, the minute you saw this painting, you said, we should do a Schieffer fragrance, right. um, which is oak moss and patchouli. And then we brought in Indonesian jasmine, Japanese violet, pink pepper for right. freshness. Uh -huh. But what came in next that really turned this fragrance around? It was... Yeah, the, 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 the plum was... The plum, uh, the plum the was cherries. really... Because basically we were happy with the fragrance, yeah. the way it was. Knowing you, I, I, I knew somehow that you were missing something, mm -hmm. and that's what you said. You unexpected the, the little wink yeah. of the of the of the fragrance, and uh, I think the plum made made it completely different. Yes. And you have more a uh, very nice introduction. It, it's uh, it's uh, it's very different. It's unique. Wonderful thing about Jerome is that we started with candles, then we went into fine fragrance. And he is so helpful to our company when we want to cross categories. So recently we talked about going into wellness mm -hmm. and, um, and what does wellness mean? And wellness was really a sort of um, something that came out of the pandemic uh, because we were spending so much time at home and mm -hmm. really spending time, you know, indulging in, you know, creams and perfumes and bubble baths and just spending time on ourselves, but really thinking about our moods, how fragrance can change your mood. And we got onto this kick of scenting your sanctuary. And so we decided that we would create this wellness collection. And our first fragrance you created for us is Wild Mint and Eucalyptus, mm. which is a huge success. It's outperforming our top selling uh, new fragrance by a multiple of six which is big. This took us some time, but this wild mint and eucalyptus, we went back and forth, um, is just extraordinary, really extraordinary. The candle here burning and the red diffuser, and I can smell it. And what's good about it, it's just put you in a good mood and you feel, you feel good. And as you yeah. said, during that pandemic, everybody is at home, uh, everybody is struggling, and just having that little candle or red diffuser that diffuse something that is fresh, that is relaxing with the yes. eucalyptus, that is uh, fighting depression. The mint is known for have those benefits. And I think those combinations, of course, it's more complex. Uh, we have like the cedar wood that is also calming in yeah. the back and helps for diffusion. But it's just, it's just a, the, the timing is absolutely perfect, I would say. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. and then, you know, as we were creating this wellness collection, we also turned to Jerome and Robert Tay to work with us on a very exclusive collection of perfume oils. And that, you know, we approached you and we said, what we want you to do is pick the most extraordinary ingredients from around the globe. We want to launch five fragrances and really single note fragrances but we want your help in saying where we should go for these five special ingredients. And we involved you, Jerome, and practically everyone at a senior level at Roberté mm. to really think about those five ingredients and where should they come from. And we ended up doing Indian jasmine, Turkish rose, Madagascar vanilla, Seville orange, and South Pacific sandalwood. Let's talk about these these oils because they are extraordinary. <laughs> I think they are yes. The the challenge of the beginning of the, the the creation process was really to find the right ingredients. We said right away you should do a citrus. Yes. Because the citrus again is like uh, is what is like this candle, the wine mint and eucalyptus. It puts you in a good mood. It makes you smile. It just makes you happy. So we we came up with the 
with the orange from uh, from a specific place in Spain that is Sevilla, uh, and um, and being there is just everything is about sun, you know, everything. The walls are colorful. It, it, you have a lot the of vibrancy, color. Yeah, yeah, the vibrancy is amazing in the, in that in that area in this area. We came up with that very juicy, bright citrus combined with neroli, and it's very complex. And it's and it's funny because the plan was um, for me to visit all these different regions, mm. and Seville was the only one I got to go on because they all had to be canceled because mm. of the pandemic. But what was so extraordinary was going to Seville and meeting with the fourth generation farmers mm. that were farming oranges for generations and their passion and their dedication. And I learned that in Seville, it's the last place in the world where the oranges are handpicked. Mm. Mm. Everywhere else it's done by machine. And just the artistry of picking that orange when the, or, when the fruit is its ripest and it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's perfect where it's going to yield the most beautiful fragrance. Um, was really unique and special, and um, just going to visit Spain and eating mm. paella and, and, mm. and all these wonderful things, um, just getting a sense of the community that supports the farming of the Seville oranges was really extraordinary. No, no, it, it is, and it's true that even talking with the local farmers is very inspiring. Yeah. And we are proud to use their ingredients and put yes. them in a bottle, because you see all the work behind. Because yes. you see, you just see liquid. And, and scent and, and fragrance, but behind there is so much work. So and, much work. And it's, uh, it's fascinating. You know, I learned that the jasmine fields of India are very special mm. because that flower in India is used in the churches. They pray with that flower. It's mm. ev the, the jasmine flower means everything. Mm. It's um, a symbol of purity. Yes. Uh, Sacredness. Exactly. But what I do like about that, that Area is really the combination of everything because you you have the flowers. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Being in the fields is like oh, so uh, inspiring. Yeah. So for a perfumer, it's like amazing to be surrounded by all those scents. Yeah. And you can see that you can smell it in the in the fragrance. Since uh, you have saffron, uh, you have a lot of spice, a lot of color, but it's also warm in the back. It's slightly. Uh, you know that jasmine has that animalic scent that for me is very sensual. Oh, like, it's so sensual. Yeah, yeah. You know, what's extraordinary is, and I don't think you've seen the final product because we no. just, I, I got this package I today, so yeah. I know you haven't seen it. I'm excited to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, we worked so closely on this collection. It was really a lot of fun. Um, wow. Yeah, it, and I wear this jasmine almost every day. I love the jasmine, the rose, those are two of my favorite. And then, you know, if I'm going bicycle riding or I some, want something more cheerful, I'm wearing the Seville orange. Uh, <laughs> and it, they're really, and you know what I love about this? It's so funny, but when Jerome and I started this collection, we both were like perfume oils. You know, we're so used to spraying mm -hmm. regular eau de parfum. But you know, Jerome, when you start to wear these perfume oils mm. and you drop the oil on your skin and you rub it into your neck, all of a sudden you're at one with the fragrance in a way that you, you are not when you spray a perfume. And it, it, it's just, you've, the, when it's combined with the baobab oil and you know you're nourishing your skin, putting this oil on, you're really close and at one with the fragrance and it's this very sensual experience. Mm. Um, and I have fallen in love with oils. I just am now obsessed with them. I and know then, you are. <laughs> yeah, and the fragrances are so beautiful because you really smell that jasmine, you mm. really smell that rose, the purity of it. Um, you captured them so beautifully. So Jerome, you know, it's always been this way. You really get our DNA, you know, in a unique way. I'm trying. <laughs> you succeeded. <laughs> um, and what, when you go to sit and make a perfume for Nest, how is it different from another client? It all depends, I think, of the owner and your team and the way you described your passion, and I'm really keen into, into this, you know? Mm -hmm. See how you react to perfumes, see how you enjoy them, or just say, no, right away. There is that very close connection that we have together, and yes. it's, uh, I'm, I'm lucky enough to, to have you as a, one of my favorite clients, and, mm -hmm. and it's always a pleasure to, to work on it, and 
It's true, sometimes we are struggling at the beginning, so we have to go back to, uh, to the white sheet and, and, and start from scratch. And, but we are always uh, trying to, to come up with something different, unique. Yeah. And, and you give me so much freedom. Again, it's, it's yeah. just... Uh, I you love listen, when you're, you're creative. You are listening to me and it's, uh, you're not trying to force it and it's very natural. So. Sometimes I call Jerome up and say, what do we do? Yeah. You know, yeah. what are we missing? Where should we go? And we have these great brainstorming sessions yeah. and we always end up where we need to be. Um, and I also want to thank you um, because you've been enormously supportive of our autism mm. initiative. Um, creating our apple blossom candle recently, now we're working on a new one. Um, and Robert has always been so generous and so kind, um, and that's really special to me. Um, it's just a great pleasure to work with you, mm. and I hope we're together for so many more years. I so. And I appreciate your creativity. I, I appreciate your passion, your dedication, um, and your help because you've been um, very important to us. Thank you very much. <laughs>